Hey, Ken. <laughs> Summertime, you'd find this whole pier crowded with groups of people, and they would be catching queenfish and she's using little snag lines, catching herring or mackerel inshore. You know, you would like to be fishing for croaker. These signs are pretty standard on most piers now. No fire, obviously, if you've set fires, it's been a lot of piers burn up with fires. No overhead casting. First thing you need to learn if you're going to fish piers is underhand casting, under the pier. And you can do just about as well as overhand casting. Imperial Beach Pier is really interesting. I moved from Newport Beach to San Diego in the summer of 1963. That fall, they opened Imperial Beach Pier. The only problem was the weekend they opened it, which is supposed to be a big celebration, was also the day that uh, was the weekend that President Kennedy was shot. So they had all this stuff planned out for the pier out here, celebration. Whereas the nation and the city was in mourning for President Kennedy. So it was kind of an ill omen, I always thought, because over the years, this pier had a lot of damage from winter storms. It closed down several times. Parts had to be rebuilt. And I always wondered, you know, I'm not really superstitious, usually, but I wondered if that's some sort of ill omen from that time that Kennedy died. This is the southern California, it's the southernmost pier, we're just a short distance, very short distance, from the Mexican border. In fact, you can sometimes see it, well, they're building more and more stuff here now. Um, so, theoretically it would be the warmest water, but really it's not much different than the water in Ocean Beach Pier, or Crystal Pier, the other piers along San Diego County. But it's an interesting pier. One thing I try to tell people on a pier is about the environment. So what you have in an oceanfront pier like this, a sandy shore pier like this, you have this inshore section, shallow water section, which is sand. And this is where the, the croakers, the corbina, even, even some of the flat, uh, even some of the rays and sharks, they feed in this inshore section. They're feeding on sand crabs, they're feeding on worms. And so the big croaker, spot fin croaker, yellow fin croaker, and the corbina. This is a favorite area, and you like to have the right bait. Like I said, worms, uh, shrimp will work. Not as good, but worms work well. Go shrimp if you can get them, and dig your own sand crab. You just be able to buy sand crabs at tackle stores. You don't see them there anymore. But this is the inshore shallow water section. Then you're going to get to the mid-pier area where the water's a little deeper and you're going to start picking up some of the deeper water fish. You're still going to catch the croakers, but you're also going to catch a couple other croakers. You're going to catch white croaker that people call tom cod or kingfish, and you're also going to catch queenfish that people call herring. So <laughs> you have a lot of different names. But that mid-pier section also a lot of times the best, best area to catch halibut. Mid pier section is also a good section for jack smelt, top smelt, even grunion at times. And those also make excellent bait, live bait for the halibut. When you go out to the end of the pier, in the deepest water, you're going to get the pelagic, you're going to get the Pacific mackerel, you're going to get the pedita. Once in a while a barracuda, once in a great while a yellowtail. Unfortunately, this pier right now, they're having a fight going on about closing the end of the pier because there's a restaurant at the end of the pier and they want more room for their patrons. So they've been closing off the end of the pier, which is making the anglers very unhappy. So that section, to some degree right now, is closed off. But in an inshore, croakers, barge surf perch, um, several different sharks and rays, one kind of bait, sand crab, worm, ghost shrimp, mid-pier, getting a combination of those fish, plus more deeper water fish, and then you can be using those baits, but also start using things like cut anchovies, cut mackerel. If you get toward the end, almost, 
unless you're fishing down by the pilings, you're not going to be using worms or crabs or anything. That's when you're going to be using cut mackerel, anchovies. There is a fourth environment that is down by the pilings. These pilings here are heavily covered with, with mussels, so that attracts a different kind of fish. That attracts some sea perch, opali, half moon, that kind of fish. And they love worms, they love little uh, uh, crabs, you can get some little crabs, um, ghost shrimp, they like ghost shrimp, and even pieces of market shrimp. They won't bite much on pieces of anchovy or pieces of mackerel, pieces of fish. They don't feed on fish. They're feeding on the organisms around the pilings. Uh, and, and so, you know, you want to use bait that is natural to what the fish normally feed upon. So, four environments, inshore, mid-pier, deep water, and then the piling area. And that's a fourth environment. So let's walk out on the pier and see what's going on out there. Fights between the surfers and the anglers. When these piers were built, they were built for fishing. They were fishing piers. And they got money from the Wildlife Conservation Board, which is part of the Fish and Game Department. And that money was to either build, in some cases, rebuild or restore piers. Most piers, because they were fishing piers, had signs telling people to stay away from the piers. No bathers, no surfers within 500 feet of the piers. This pier, they've had an ongoing battle for the last few years between the surfers and the anglers. And it's the only place I know of where it seems like the city has taken the side of the surfers. And they're actually closing off sometimes this intersection of the pier, not allowing the anglers to fish it, even though this is the prime area for the large croakers. They're letting the surfers get right up by the pier, sometimes shoot the pier, which is what they like to do. That was never allowed in the past. So seeing sur every, every Southern California pier, you're going to see surfers because there's something to do with the water and the, the piers. They set up good breaks in the waves. I don't know if you can see it today, but typically the Los Coronado Islands are right off to the south and prime fishing territory. It's a little hazy today, so you can't see them very well. It used to be where everybody would go for the yellowtail. San Diego used to be known for a yearly yellowtail derby that was one of the biggest on the west coast. At one time, actually a couple times, they had sport fishing boats operating out from the end of this pier and they advertised it was the shortest trip to the Coronado Islands. You could take a half day boat actually to the Coronado Islands. Unfortunately, winter storms, they had a lot of problems with winter storms, uh, ripping out the, the landing area and seas could be rough which were trying to climb from the boat up to the pier when the, when the, when the waves were pounding against the landing it could be a little scary and so there haven't been any um, sport fishing facilities now for several years. When they first built it, this was going to be the closest thing to the Coronado Islands. This is still that inshore area I was talking about. It's the best area for um, barge surf perch, uh, spot fin croaker, yellowfin croaker. It's also good certain times of the year for leopard sharks and some of the other rays. Um, okay, brother. Okay, thank you. Have a good one. The gentleman right here, he just caught a uh, spot fin croaker and a barge surf perch. The problem here is some, not every day, but certain days they put out signs saying not to fish this area. I don't know if it's when they have other events going on or surfing competition going on or what. Today it's wide open, anybody can fish this area. Let's go down to the mid pier area. I hear they're catching sardines and mackerel down there. Yeah, yeah. We live, um, yeah, we live in Oibe. Yeah, a little halibut. Yeah, halibut. Did you get your picture? Yeah. Cool. What'd you catch it on? Uh, with the sardines. Oh, so, oh, your live sardines? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the way to go. People are getting smelt. Sometimes you can just use a net, sometimes you can take a net. 
put little pieces of bread or pieces of pizza dough, something like that, and then come up. So the ones in here with the spots, those are sardines. So what's flopping around here, he just caught on his line and then jacked it out. Good eating and good bait. So, Bobbers, little small bobbers to keep it up near the top of the water. And they have these are different kind of sabiki rigs, different size hooks, different size um, feathers. But they're all designed to get bait fish, either anchovies, sardines, or mackerel when the mackerel are running. Personally, I don't like to use them unless I'm fishing for bait. Um, they're a pain in the neck. They do catch a lot of bait, bait fish. Um, but if it's mackerel or something like that, I prefer just to use two hooks. Uh, catch just, just as many mackerel as you need. It's more fun, a little bit more sporting. And these, these different bait rigs usually cost anywhere from $250 to $3 or three ninety-nine. dollars If you get three or four mackerel on one of them, they can t t twist the thing all up and you just, just lost $4. So I just use a couple hooks and a little bit of bait. And, Catch plenty of mackerel without without having to use sabikis, but that seems to be the choice. A lot of people think just put a ton of hooks on your line. That's all you need. It'll take care of it. They they put the restaurant out here, of course, to make money for the city. Um, they've been fighting with the restaurant now for quite a while because the restaurant wants to uh, close off the end have more room to set their tables out. Um, problem is, of course, like today, and they're not even open. Here it is on Sunday and they're not open. Um, so it's really upset a lot of the anglers as to why why they're doing this when they're not, you know, why they can't share a room. Let's walk out a little bit. I don't know if we can see or not, but around the outside of the place there's some great fishing spots. Lots of, lots, this is where the, the landing used to be where they had the sport fishing boats. And there's a bunch of pilings out there, heavy pilings, and they're really encrusted with, with mussels. And they're a good fishing spot just straight down off the pier. But when they're closing the end here, you can't get to those areas. And so some of the biggest fish are at the end. In fact, we had a couple years ago, we had a guy catch a 50-pound white sea bass out at the end out here. Uh, now that, that area seems to be closed. So... It's a fi supposedly a fishing pier, yet they're putting restrictions on the fishing, which doesn't seem fair to the anglers. Don't know if I mentioned it. <laughs> Piers are great places just to walk. When you get to be my age, or even when you're younger, you should be walking. And uh, a lot of fun just to walk out, take your daily walk, and walk out to the end of the pier and back. You're out over the ocean, it's a nice breeze, see all the surfers, watch the fishermen. Couldn't ask for a better place to go for a hike or walk, a daily walk. So you can see the sign out here they've put up. No fishing beyond this point. No fishing. Yet if you look in there, you have all these tables right here where they could close off the area. But you can't hardly see it. But there's all kinds of area to fish farther out at the end, which really would not be disturbing the people eating. So I'm, I'm not really clear why the city's agreeing to this. If you look over here, I don't know if you can see this, Rich, or not. If you look down here, you can see a lot of the pilings. That whole area was set up for the for the fishing landing. The fishing sport fishing boat could come in and uh, they could load and unload the boat right in that area. Of course, that's now not being used for anything. Morning. Good morning. So what hours is the restaurant open? Um, on the weekends right now, we're doing 11 to about 8. 11 to 8? Yeah, and then um, during the week, it's going to be about 12 to about 7, 7.30. I see no fishing anymore beyond this point? Yeah, that is the decision of the port and the city. Huh. Were they... they Anglers aren't too happy, I don't imagine. I don't, I don't think so. No, but um, it's better for the tourism, honestly, and it's, um, it's uh, a lot of safety issues as well, from what I've been told. Okay.
Well, we would disagree, I would say on this. Anyway, it's a beautiful morning. It's about 9.30 in the morning, sun's out, October day, and uh, you couldn't ask for greater weather. This is why people like San Diego. <laughs> I used to live down here. I liked a little bit of season, but boy, sometimes when it's uh, cold and foggy up north, uh, it's kind of nice to come down here to the sunshine. It's hard to beat.